Now I started going to, to shamans, psychics, witches. I seen voodoo done in front of me. I seen the little huts they have. I seen the human skulls summoning demons into their body. I'm seeing spiritual stuff happen. It's just, it's blowing my mind. I'm like, there has to be something real about all this. Like what's going on? I'm feeling conviction. And there was one day, Sid, one day, December 1st, 2019. I, I just couldn't take it anymore. It's when I realized that Jesus, I remember I'll never, I, in my apartment alone, I was encountered by Jesus, knocked to the ground. I started getting delivered from demons right there. I started manifesting demons. I blacked out. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Your presence is here. Have freedom. Set the captives free. My guest is a forerunner of the great end time glory revival that you will see millions of young people instantly transform as occurred in his case as an apostle of Satan. He was transformed to be a high priest of the living God. I can't wait for you to hear about his guided tour by Jesus of heaven and his fearlessness when he personally met the actual demon of rejection and ask him to demonstrate his gift of setting people free from all types of the demonic. Richard, tell me the backstory uh, about really the maze you went through till you had your encounter with God. Uh, you know what? You are as strong now for God as you were in what you're about ready to say. I think you're stronger. <laughs> Amen, Sid. So, oh man, I I was seeking for purpose. I was seeking for the purpose of life. Um, uh, since I was young, I always had that question just running in my mind. Um, my family just raised in a in a household that that, that Jesus was not glorified. The, Jesus was not the centerpiece um, in a city called uh, Sunrise in Broward County, Florida, a bad area. I went down a pretty deep, deep path. Uh, Sid. I, I left my house when I was 18, went to college, graduated from uh, Drexel University with a 3.9 GPA. I was an air traffic controller in the Navy, so I was living this double life. I was living a double life. I'm FAA certified. So Sid, it led me down, like I, like I said, drug dealing and... Um, gang activity, uh, you know, being affiliated with different gangs. And I just was empty, Sid, empty, suicidal, depressed, just didn't know what the purpose of life was. And all my friends around me just seemed not to care. All these things never fulfilled me, never fulfilled me. And it led me to start seeking deep spiritual practice. I started getting deep into witchcraft, Sid, like um, I started getting deep into voodoo. I actually flew out to Haiti. The girl I was dating at the time, her cousin is a, is a was a voodoo priest, and he offered to give me some inside information. And he said the only way I could know is if I went out to Haiti. And at this point, I didn't believe in that stuff. I didn't think with like the vo a voodoo priest could tell me anything. I I didn't believe in it. I thought it was all fake. Like you know, like people say, if you don't believe in it, it's not true. So hmm. I went out there, Sid, and um, I seen voodoo done in front of me. I seen the little huts they have. I seen the human skulls. You know, I seen the rituals, the drinking of alcohol, smoking cigars, summoning demons into their body, um, card reading, um, all different types of things, you know. And I saw it, I saw it in front of me, Sid, and I and I just listened and a lot of the things they told me, you know, the demonic words of knowledge, demonic words of knowledge, you know, they they were spot on. And um and it, it made me believe in it. The devil is a counterfeit artist, literally. And he he can't uh, do the real thing. So he does something that you think is the real thing, but it's a cheap, cheap imitation of the real thing. Amen, Sid. You see, the, the enemy, he can't tell you the future. He can only tell you about your past. You know, he's the, he's the accuser of all brethren. Demons and angels in the spirit realm, they obviously can, they, 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 they're at a different capacity of understanding. They're, they're, they're not in a time-based reality. So they information for them is, is acquired easily. They don't have to think like we do. So like 
So a demon, they they know what's going on. They know about your family history. They know about generations back. If you went, like I always use this analogy, if you went to McDonald's and got a number three, they can easily just just tell the you know tell the the psychic who already is operating in a familiar spirit, which is a demonic spirit, and let them know, hey, you know, let them know, you know, they got a number three at McDonald's. And then a person that's ignorant and doesn't know what's going on will sit there and listen and be like, oh, how did you know that? I did get a number three. And now they got you. It's called witchcraft. It's control. Because once they got you with that one word of knowledge, which is demonic, it's perversion. Like you said, Sid, it's perversion. Now that you listen to everything they say and then they start they start speaking death and curses and you come in agreement. When you come in agreement with it, you're automatically just you're 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 by the power of your faith your things are going to start happening in your life that's how people get cursed that's how people they go down these wicked paths because they think that it's real and it's it, that's the that's the power of faith Sid and um I I, I believed a lot of what he said because it was so spot on and you know he was telling me that this person was against me and this person was against me and it led me down a path Sid when I got back to California because I had flew out from San Diego to Haiti when I came back I started going deep sit i started going to more voodoo priests now i started going to, to shamans psychics witches i mean i was going to mediums i went to an indian medium in san diego i'll never forget that and these these witches and warlocks it, they were telling me spot on things but i was going crazy because i'm seeing spiritual stuff happen it's just it's blowing my mind i'm like there has to be something real about all this like what's going on i went down this past it and um i mean deep i had altars in my in my apartment um, with different statues that I was uh, I was bowing down to, and I had salt in corners to protect to ward off evil or protect me. I was burning all different types of sages. I had thousands of dollars worth of crystal sid. I didn't have the little crystals that you see on TikTok with the little kid, like you know the young children. I had the big ones, the thousand dollar ones, and had them at my front door and around my house for protection from bad energy. And I had a pendulum crystal or two, and I was balancing chakras. I was learning from shamans, you know, the counterclockwise, clockwise, scattered. I was learning all this, but I was so empty. I knew that it wasn't it. That's why I kept going deeper and deeper and deeper. Egyptian gods, the Anunnaki, the Enki, <clears throat> the Enil. I'm studying all these different, these different things. And I'm, I mean, I was bringing crystals into a Catholic church thinking I was doing something right. I was going crazy, Sid, because I couldn't find it. And it's like I all, all I kept hearing was a voice say, keep going keep going keep going and Sid it was when the father began to when he finally knew it was time after he let me go on the deep end to try to find out if this was it and that was it he started sending Christians he started sending Christians that would walk up to me and just look at me and say you have a light on you oh my goodness you're such you're, you're a blessing and you're an angel and all these different things and it was just too coincidental you know, I had this one guy come up to me. His name was Richard. I was in a liquor store, Sid. And he said, you have a light on you. And my name is Richard. So when I asked him, hey, what's your name? He said, Richard. I'm like, oh, man, what a coincidence. He's like, man, I just got saved a few weeks ago. Um, I'm a Christian. And he starts crying, literally, like in the liquor store. And I'm like, why is this guy crying? Like, why does he care so much? He's like, man, you have to come to my house tonight. I want to invite you over, you know, and because, um, you know, he's a new saved Christian. So they were having a Halloween party. You know, I don't me that's not my cup of tea you know i don't celebrate halloween but um you know the lord even he used it and i me and my uh girl at the time we went to uh his house multi-million dollar house and you know he had all these different people you know at his at his at his, at his house and we just didn't understand why they were so nice we only went because we thought it was going to be a business opportunity that's the only reason i went and um we're in there just just you know scoping it out and he just kept talking talking to me about jesus he sat next to me pretty much neglected everyone else, else at the party, him and his wife. And they just talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm like, why is this guy so obsessed with Jesus, man? And I'm trying to talk to him about real estate because he obviously he owns real estate. He has a, he's a company. He's obviously successful. And I, I'm like, and he's just like, just disregarding the real estate questions and Jesus, Jesus. I'm like, okay, we got to go. This is weird. Let's get out of here. And um, the Lord kept sending more people. So I found a barber out there. Um, I needed a barber. I, met, I left California, came to West Palm. I needed to find a barber. I got recommended to a barber, and his name happened to be Paul. Right, Sid? His name happened to be Paul, Holy Spirit-filled Christian. And, you know, I'm, uh, you know, African-American brother, and 
and I'm, I'm getting cut up by him and he starts talking to me about Christian music, Christian rap. And I'm like, man, I don't listen to that, man. You got to listen to this type of rap. And I'm, talk, I'm talking to him about Nipsey Hussle and, you know, these other, these, these worldly demonic rappers. And, and he's just neglecting me. He's standing strong. Like, nah, man, I don't listen to that. I don't listen to music that speaks death. I don't listen to music that, where they curse. I don't do that. And I'm just like, man, why? Why can't I? Why won't this guy budge? There's no way he listens to Christian rap. Like, man, whatever. So I get my hair cut. And then I just start seeking deeper things. Like I'm at, the, I'm at my apartment now. I'm going through a lot with my girl. I'm just like, I got to figure this out. And that's when the Lord even went harder. And, um, and that's when I, I was on YouTube. I'll never forget this. I was scrolling. I was looking for chakra balancing videos. I was learning how to be a shaman. And, and I'll never forget it. I saw one video on this suggested and it said, preacher cast demons out of Reiki healer. I'm like, what? A Christian? And I click on the video and it's a brother named Torben Sandergaard from the last reformation. If you know who he is, Sid. And I see a powerful man of God and he's casting demons out of a witch. And I'm watching the whole process and she's being interviewed saying, how she was a Reiki healer for 13 years and, and this and that. And I'm like, what? And as he's praying for her, I'm feeling, I'm feeling manifestations. Like I'm feeling demons. I'm feeling things. I'm feeling, I'm feeling weird. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to tremble a little bit. And that's when I called my girl, Hey, look at this. Christians have power because my only perspective on Christianity was the Catholic church. I was already like, I was already deceived with that religious sector. So when I saw that power, it just, it sparked such a deep, deep, like interest. And he has a map, he has a road map, um, or he has different, um, different people from TLR all around the world. And I clicked on somebody local in West Palm and I met this lady named Sharon. I mean, four foot 10 white lady, um, very nice. Um, and she was just so confident. I told her about what I was going through with my girlfriend. I told her about uh, where you know we had a child out of, uh, you know out of wedlock and and she just did had she had no doubt she started praying for me she started speaking speaking the, like preaching the gospel to me speaking life into me and I would just I just had this urge to always call her whenever I'd be going through something and she would pray for me and that's when the Lord started going harder so I decided you know what I'm gonna get a Bible so I bought a Bible off of Amazon. And when it finally came in, I picked up, I, I went by my little lake in my neighborhood in Jupiter Beach, Florida, and I just opened the Bible for the first time, and a guy happened to be walking his dog. At that time, it was like a Tuesday at two o'clock in the afternoon, everyone's supposed to be at work, and he stops and says, hey, what's that? And I'm like, you know, a Bible, you know, I'm just reading a book. <clears throat> and he said, he said, can I sit down with you and talk to you about <clears throat> this Bible? And I'm like, yeah, man, sure. His name's John. And he happens to be a Bible, a Bible study teacher. You know, so he leads Paul Bible and, studies. Paul and John are approaching you. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, my name, Paul, Barber, yeah. John, the teacher, the pastor. So I didn't, and I didn't know any of this until after, you know, obviously, um, that 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 these were names of, you know, two of them were names of, of, of apostles in the Bible. So he sits down with me and he's just so again, confident just confident. Like I have all these beads around my neck. Sid. I have all these voodoo beads, many of them evil eye. Like I had a big evil eye from Africa, $300 evil eye. Like I believed in these things and I was telling him I'm taking it. I'm showing him. And he was so confident just saying it's in the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. You don't have to worry about it. And I'm just like the name of Jesus. So I don't have to pay for a ritual. I don't have to go get this and that. And no, no, it's the name of Jesus. He said, when you go home, make sure you use the name of Jesus in your home. He said, and I want you to read the book of Romans. I want you to read the book of, <clears throat> the book of Romans. When you get home, read it through. He gave me his number and said, I'm going to check up on you weekly. And I mean, Sid, like the guy would, just, again, texting me and actually cared. I didn't understand how. So that's another 40-year-old uh, a Caucasian. Richard, Caucasian, you know, Sharon, Caucasian. And, and, they look, and look at me, Sid, you see what I'm saying? Like with voodoo, like voodoo beads around me, like these people had no fear. And for me, I'm just like, man, this is, this is different. Like they have, they're not, they're not asking me for money, you know, because when you do witchcraft, they ask you for money. They're not, they're not trying to force me. They're just so, so loving, but so confident and bold. 
So I started in the book of Romans, Sid, and I, I pulled out my Bible and I started reading. And that's when I began to feel conviction. And as I'm reading the book of Romans, just the conviction, the conviction as I'm reading it. And this is it was in the King James Version, Sid. And I'm a I, I'm, I'm an unsaved, you know, like just 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 a guy reading KJV. But I could understand it somehow as I'm reading. I understood it. I understood it. And I'm reading and I'm just I'm feeling conviction. And there was one day, Sid. One day, December 1st, 2019, I, re I just couldn't take it anymore. It's when I realized that Jesus Christ, he's the one, and I'll never forget it. When I stopped and I paused and I said, Jesus Christ, he's God. He's the highest power. When I knew that he was Lord, because you know, the word Lord means master, a translation. So when I knew he was the Lord, master, highest power, he's the, he's the one, he's, he's the highest. When I knew it and I believed it, I remember I never, I, in my apartment alone, I was encountered by Jesus, knocked to the ground. I started getting delivered from demons right there. I started manifesting demons. I blacked out for about 20 minutes. I don't remember what happened. I just knew that spit was coming out, snot. I'm getting uh, coughing up. I'm getting delivered. I'm crying like a baby. I'm weeping. I, I got encountered by the presence of God and got filled with the spirit. Right there, I began to speak in tongues and they were not demonic tongues. I began to speak in tongues. And I didn't know why I was speaking. I didn't know why I was doing it. And I would try to stop myself and I was just, it just felt like I needed to do it. And I just got up and I just felt peace. That was the first time I felt overwhelming peace. And I knew, I knew in my heart, deep down in my soul, that it was Jesus because I received the Holy Spirit. I immediately called Sharon explained to her what happened. That's when I knew, okay, it's time. I got to get rid of everything. So I took all my altars, all the statues, all the beads, all the crystals. I mean, I was so radically encountered by Jesus Christ. I even took jewelry that I could have pawned. I didn't care. Gold jewelry said 22 karat gold, like Egyptian crosses and different things that cost thousands of dollars. I didn't care. Even some of my designer clothes, because I was all up in the world buying designer stuff, trying to fit in I just was like, I don't even want this because this and that. And I just got a big old bag and I went to the middle of the woods in the back of my neighborhood. It was a, it's a, there was a wildlife preserve back there. I wasn't supposed to go back there. And I started a little bonfire in the middle of the woods late at night. And the girl that I was dating, she even came with me. You know, I put her through so much. She even came with me. And I remember said we burned the whole thing, put it in the fire and burned it and never looked back. I came back and I told her, I said, look, this lady, Sharon, she told me we can't fornicate. We can't even sleep in the same bed because it looks like sin. I know it's Jesus. I'm done. I can't do this. We're not even boyfriend, girlfriend. Said she cursed me out. How dare you? You have your child in my belly seven months. I'm seven months pregnant. You put me through all this. Now it's Jesus. I don't, I don't believe. And she wanted to leave me. And I just said, look, if you leave me, it's okay. I still, I still love you. I had so much peace, Sid. I was different. And I just said, I can't sleep in the same bed. So I slept on the floor and the other room. Um, I just slept there. And that's that's when I got more deliverance, Sid. I just, I, I watched porn my whole life. My whole life, Sid, I, I watched porn my whole life. I was addicted since I was a young kid. That day I got encountered by Jesus Christ and I knew I had to give up porn. I'll never forget the night I slept. I saw two spirits by my bed, shadows. And I had the old, most overwhelming feeling to the sexual drive to watch porn or to call a girl or something. And I said, no. And I called upon the name of Jesus. Got, I knocked out. I went to sleep and woke up and I never watched porn, Sid. Since the day I was saved, I have not watched porn, not even once, Sid, by the grace of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. I got delivered, Sid, and I was addicted. I never, I never had sex with another girl. I never even flirted with another girl. I stayed celibate. And I stayed strong. And, and the girl that I was dating, um, that, we, that we broke it off, she was already planning to leave me um, and said, I prayed. I prayed and that lady, Sharon, she prayed with me for her to get encountered by Jesus. Two weeks later, she had a supernatural encounter while she was sleeping. Two encounters. First one was she woke up said, to two spirits, demons, one that looked exactly like me trying to have sex with her. And she screamed and she said, ah, and I ran to the room and I said, what's going on? She said, I saw two D I saw two of these, these people. And one of them looked just like you, but I knew it wasn't you. I don't know. And she was shaking. She's pregnant with my child Sid. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And we, I just called Sharon. We started praying. That was her first encounter. The second encounter. Cause after that, it's, it, the fear of the Lord, 
really, really, that really changed her because she started reading the Bible. I said, just read, just read. And all I knew what to tell, all I knew to tell her was, Hey, read the book of Romans, read the book of Romans, like download the, uh, the Bible app on your phone. Just read the book of Romans. And she was so terrified because of that encounter. She, she, she did it. And I didn't, I didn't think she would, to be honest, Sid. and she did. And about two weeks after I got saved, she had an encounter with Jesus. And she came to me saying, I got, I, I got encountered by, by, the, by Jesus. I was reading the book of Romans. I saw him on the cross literally. And I, I believe you know, and I, I was so, I had so many strongholds, Sid, that I didn't believe her all the way. I had trust issues. And I said, well, we're going to have to see. We're going to have to make sure I need to see fruit because I can't do this. I'm already looking at another apartment. I got to go. I got to, I got to flee from fornication. And that's when we started seeking deliverance, Sid. And we went to some deliverance ministries and we saw things that changed our life, words and knowledge the right way by the, by the, by the Holy Ghost and real prophecy foretelling the future and all the things that were spoken into our lives actually ended up coming to pass. Um, just really specific things and prayer and us getting delivered from demons. I mean, some of my deliverance sessions said I spit up blood, literally blood was in the, the vomit, the vomit bag. I mean, coughing up, she got delivered words and knowledge flew through a prophet one time about what happened to her with, when she was little and with her, with somebody in her life. And, and she got healed and said after about two months before our, before about a month and a half before our child was born, we ended up getting married. We needed to get baptized. We needed to get married. We were just so hungry. So Sharon and another and another man of God took us to a 24-hour fitness gym and we went to the jacuzzi tub area and we got baptized. And um again, I already spoke in tongues. Uh, my wife ended up speaking in tongues a few months later in, in the kitchen. She received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, just really just empowered to be a true witness onto the nations and and Sid, ever since then we've just been radically lit up on fire for Jesus. You know, what is so fascinating to me, Richard, is I'm a feeler. I can feel in the spirit what's going on. There wasn't much presence of God when you talk darkness. The second you started talking about Jesus, the presence of God got stronger and stronger and stronger. <laughs> and another thing that impressed me was there are so many people watching us involved in the dark side and they don't even know it's the dark side, but they do know they haven't been satisfied. They do know there's something more. And Amen. I wonder if you would pray for them to come to know Jesus right now. Of course, of course. Father, Lord, I just, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to even give this testimony. It's the testimony of the saints and the blood of the lamb. That's how we overcome the enemy in these last days. And we don't love our life onto this. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, for anyone that's deceived in witchcraft, thinking that evil eyes, crystals, hamshas, any type of witchcraft, voodoo, any type of uh, horoscopes, dream catchers, and they think these things protect them. Lord, I pray right now that you would convict them Holy Spirit, I pray that you would touch them and that you would convict them and let them know that they do they do not need those things to protect them, that we have we have a God whose name alone is a strong tower, whose name alone is excellent, the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would touch them, convict them, and they would get rid of all those witchcraft items. And they, they, they would know that they have full protection in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, in the name of Jesus, amen. And they would come to know you, Jesus, even That's more me. than I do, even more than Richard does. Yes, and Lord. they would be used mightily in these last days to help a desperate world. Richard, I, ca I can't wait, but tell me the brief story of Jesus appearing and taking you to heaven and showing you heaven. Tell me about that just briefly. Amen. So about, um, like I said, Sid, after I got saved, I was radical. Um, I immediately started evangelizing, evangelizing, evangelizing. I didn't even know it was called evangelism. <laughs> I was just letting everybody know my testimony and how it's Jesus. I was going everywhere. I mean, witchcraft stores, Publix, Walmart, Home Depot. I didn't care. Everywhere I went, I was witnessing and the Lord was taking me and showing me miracles after miracles. So after about a year of just learning so much, getting in my word, I'd be reading books a day, every, a new, like the book of Revelation, the book of John, the book of Mark. I would just keep reading every day. I was just consecrated to the Lord. Um, about after a year, he took me into, he took me into a, a trance. I got taken up 
And the Lord literally took me to heaven. I'll never forget this. It was Jesus Christ at my right hand side. He took me up and it was a, it was a dream that had different parts, but this specific part, this specific part, he showed me heaven. I saw, I saw the beauty of just the, uh, the agriculture, just how everything was alive. I saw the animals. I saw the beauty, even the air, the sky, everything alone. And I was, it was an aerial view of me kind of looking down into a specific area of heaven. It looked almost like a massive garden or like a, like a futuristic jungle. I don't even know how to explain it. It was so amazing that my jaw in the, in the trance dream, whether I was in the body or not, I don't know. Literally it dro my, I dropped, like I couldn't, oh, I couldn't close my mouth. I was the entire time I was like that. And he showed me and it was, and I'm just freaked out. And then he switched me to another part of the dream and everything in that dream. And it was so detailed and specific. Everything came to pass spot on, Sid. You mean when he told you what would happen in the future? Yes, uh, regarding ministry. He actually at that point told me to leave West Palm Beach and move to Orlando, Florida to be part of a specific ministry. And that ministry ended up taking off. The minute we got there, that ministry took off. I honor that man of God, uh, powerful man of God. His name is Daniel Adams. He's actually part of the supernatural life. And um, we, we're not part of that ministry right now. Um, we've kind of branched off, but that that's when we left West Palm Beach and moved to Orlando, Sid. And everything changed. Everything changed. And we needed, we needed that con confirmation because we were about to move to Dallas, Texas. But God stopped it and gave me back-to-back -back dreams of going to Orlando, Florida. And Torben Sandergaard was actually in that dream as well. He was actually in that same dream. And that's when I ended up meeting him, Sid. Uh, I didn't know him when I joined the last Reformation. I didn't know him. You know, it's a big global move. I just was a part of a local group out in West Palm. But in the dream, the Lord showed me I was going to meet him. And I ended up meeting him, Sid. And we're actually good friends now. He actually came to my house when we started our ministry in our house church. And he blessed it. And he came with um, TLR. And man, um, I know now he's in prison. He's locked up. But that's still a, definitely a brother in Christ that's doing amazing things for the Lord Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Uh, you go in, you're, you're really fearless in the Lord. I mean, you go to places like mosques, psychic offices, New Age stores, and even worse, and lead people to the Lord and witness to them. Um, two questions. Why is there so much presence of God around you? <laughs> uh, Sid, it's, it's just, it's the assignment. It's the assignment. You know, like I said, I was doing that before there was even a camera before I even had anybody with me, I would go alone. Uh, my wife, you know, she can attest to this. She would stay at home with the baby and I would go out for hours. And it was hard for her to even believe it at first because I used to be so different. But um, I would take her out with me and, you know, she would be in the car and watch me and I'd be evangelizing in the streets. And yes, it, I would just bring, the, I'd bring the presence of God with me. I would, I would always make sure I worship and, and, and just praise God before I go into these shops. And it was just always so divine. Um, every shop I would go into would always be divine. And now that we get it on video, it's just grace. It's it's the assignment that God wants us to um to to just minister and is expose darkness and do it in love, not in a way where we're condemning people and you know, do it in a strategic way. Be all things to all men, so that you might save some, you know, so that we can save some. You know, if I'm with the Jews, I'll be a Jew. If I'm with the weak, I'll be weak. If I'm with the sidekicks, I won't be a sidekick, but I could understand understand what their mentality is and how they think their wordplay what they believe and how they move to be able to 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 give them deeper revelation on the lord so that they could that it'll spark their interest so that they'll receive prayer that they'll get healing they'll get encountered by the lord delivered from demons um, we've seen psychics said come to the church i mean full-blown witches that i have meet in coffee shops vegan shops the lord would send me to places you know, and they they would get encountered behind the register and come to our church, be baptized, filled with the Spirit, delivered, and bring their friends. We're seeing it at at our at our, at our church right now. Revival every service, is, and witches and warlocks are coming and giving up witchcraft items at the revival. We just had one this past weekend. Witchcraft items brought to the front: vapes, cigarettes, 
every service said the Lord is moving. You are fearless. What's your secret? The Lord. It's, I promise you, Sid, it's the Lord and me praying for wisdom because the fear of the Lord is the first step to wisdom. So those who fear the Lord have wisdom. Day one, when I knew that we could pray for wisdom, you know, the book of James says, and that he gives it freely, he gives it liberally. I mean, that's something I always pray for. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, Lord, increase it. Increase my wisdom, I need more. And be, as God, as the Lord increases me in wisdom, my, my fearlessness by fearing him and having reverence to him, knowing that he's almighty and all powerful, he's in control of everything. There's nothing on this planet that can move or, or, or do anything without his permission, knowing that my father created, created everything and he has control. That alone, I just I have comfort, Sid, and I can go anywhere and I don't fear it because of that. What about when this uh, demon, and it, it's, it, it, uh, it's <laughs> name, demon of rejection, shows mm. up uh, and, uh, I mean, there are, most people, are suffering from degrees of rejection, uh, some more than others. Some are filled with demons, the others are kind of just filled with hurt and brokenness. But tell me about that experience. Amen. So Sid, uh, I, when we started our house church, it, it went from 20, 15 to 20 people, simple Bible study to, to our house being packed out with over 100 people. I mean, like, shoulder to shoulder and there was a lot of people coming that um that dealt with the same things my wife and I dealt with coming from the streets coming from brokenness coming from rejection so when we started the ministry and it started growing so fast I was sleeping one night I'll never forget this because we were seeing deliverance break out every every service in my house twice a week just breaking out breaking out and one night I was sleeping and I, I got up and I was in my body I know I was it wasn't like sleep paralysis it wasn't a dream and I and I felt a presence, so I looked to my right. And when I looked to my right, I saw a demon. The demon had to be at least seven feet tall, had an all black cloak, cloak on, just a black cloak. And the face was so dark, it was a darkness that you couldn't see the facial expression, like the features, you couldn't see this inside of the cloak. And it was a big, broad demon. And it just stood there and just stared at me. And the first reaction I had, and I don't know why I did this, <laughs> but I tried to backhand the demon. So as soon as I tried to backhand the demon, I got this close and my hand started shaking and it started going back towards me and I couldn't move. And the force that was being pushed out and that spirit was so strong, I could not, I could not overpower it in my own might, in my own strength. And I just, I was scared out of my mindset and I just said, and right when I got out, Jesus, he came down like a light and the demon just and fled. And that really, like, I kind of got, I knocked back out, went to sleep and woke up and I ran to my kitchen and I just started weeping on the floor, crying like, what just happened? This was so real. What just happened? What just happened? And the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to be dealing with the spirit of rejection. You need to study it, learn it, because the majority of your ministry is going to be casting that demon out and helping people get healed from strongholds regarding that spirit. And, and you know, it's so interesting. Uh, the average person would think they're, uh, they're dealing with flesh and blood. So they'd have that reaction. You had to push it away. But yeah. <laughs> all you needed to do is know Jesus and have faith in Jesus. Uh, I, I, I bet knowing that, experiencing that, you're not fearful of anything, knowing the power of Jesus. Yes, sir. I've been, I've, I've seen demons. The Lord has taken me up before and showed me, um, before uh, spirit, uh, demons over regions, over houses. I've seen, and I've, I've just used the name of Jesus plenty of times, and I've seen how powerful the name of Jesus is. How scared that the authority behind His name is just, it's unmatchable. So just the simple, just Jesus, you go into a psychic store and just say, Jesus, demons flee. They run into corners, they hide, they leave because they can't stand the name. And even sit an unbeliever, someone that's not even filled with the spirit can use the name of Jesus. And that name will still have power and authority. 
That's how powerful his name is. Have you tried saying the blood of Jesus and of seen course. any anything different? Yes. Um, during deliverance, I've prayed. We've seen hundreds upon hundreds of deliverances, Sid. Um, many in the streets, especially, um, in the in the, in the ser in services and. When I use the blood of Jesus, a lot of times when a demon's manifesting and a demon doesn't want to come out, it's usually because of unrepented sin someone's dealing with. And I usually intercede. And when I use the blood of Jesus against any accusation of the enemy, that's usually when they they come out. They come out quickly because the blood washes all, washes all sins away. What's going to happen if you pray for people right now? not just for the spirit of rejection, but any spirit, what would happen? I believe that on this, on this stream, on this podcast, people are going to get delivered from demons just from this prayer. Go for it. Amen. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, first and foremost, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over anyone watching, anyone watching any of their sins right now that they don't know of, Lord, that they might not be aware of, just like Nehemiah interceded for Israel, I intercede for them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, and I plead the blood, Lord, forgive them. I have grace and mercy, and I pray right now, every demonic spirit that could be operating in anybody's soul, anybody's flesh right now, any spirit of infirmity, I command you to come up and you come out in the name of Jesus. I bind every strong man operating right now in the name of Jesus Christ, and I command you to come up and you come out and go to the abyss, go to the bottomless pit, by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot stay. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Every unclean spirit. Right now, there's someone dealing with infirmity. There's someone dealing with 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 brain cancer. There's someone dealing with with with. I see, I seen right now someone's head. You're dealing with migraines, headaches, some type of infirmity. Right now, I command that spirit of infirmity to come up and out of them. Right now, in Jesus' name, and I command the the mind, the brain, to be healed and the flesh. And right now, anyone dealing with any strongholds, any demonic spirits of rejection any demons operating of rejection i command you to come up and out too right now in jesus name you cannot stay anyone who believes they're bipolar or schizophrenic you're not that is a lie that is a spirit of rejection as the root that causes fear and causes pride and rebellion and I, right now i dismantle that demonic operation i come at the root of rejection and i command you to come up and come out and go to the abyss right now in jesus name leave in jesus name i thank you lord for freedom i thank you for your blood and i thank you lord that wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, I want to repeat that statement and close with it. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is <laughs> peace. There is purpose. There is direction. And I pray that everyone that opened themselves up to know Jesus will have an encounter and fulfill their good destiny in the book of life. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen.